Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Supermansion panel at C2E2. Thank you, everyone, joining and uh, online watching. Uh, my name is Stephen Shaw. I work at Sony Crackle, and we are very proud to be uh, presenting this show um, on behalf of Sony Pictures Television and Stupid Buddy Studios. We'd like to uh, show you uh, parts of season three and, and welcome you to this panel. So thank you all for joining. I'd like to uh, bring out our, uh, our stars of the panel today, so let's bring them out. We have um, head writer and co-creator Zeb Wells, star of stage and screen, Brecken Meyer, and co-creator and producer extraordinaire, Matt Senreich. These chairs are intense. How are you? It's like, it's like we're on the voice. <laughs> so, uh, nice chill panel today. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have the new season of Super Mansion coming out on uh, Sony Crackle on May 7th. And uh, I'd like to uh, have the guys talk about it a little bit. And uh, I guess my first, my first question is, what's exciting to you about season three? What, what's, what, what gets you charged up about uh, May 7th and bringing the show to all the fans? I think the idea of having our villains living with the heroes this season is going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys saw the end of season two, but they teamed up with the heroes to help save the world. And they find an old law that says if you help save the world, you get to be declared a hero. So they use that to move <laughs> themselves into the mansion. And so there's a lot of real world-esque problems going on with them trying to all jam into that space. The opposite of what's happening here in this room. <laughs> we still love you. Thank you. <laughs> it's mutual. It's mutual. <laughs> Matt, what's exciting to you about season three? About season three? Um, I think part of the fun of this is watching these characters that we've evolved over the last two seasons kind of seeing the good guy, bad guy relationships now forced to really get to know each other, which will either be for good or for bad, is, is the way I put it. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's what's fun. It's, the, it's that Black Saturn, Groner relationship that you kind of see happen. It's, uh, you know, it's the Rex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the Rex. Uh, I can't stop laughing about this. Cause the Diviso relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Groner and Saturn become a thing, a uh, much bigger thing this season, which is, has been a lot of fun to play with. Breck, and your your character is a bigger part of season three than than he was in season two, and you play mm -hmm. some other voices as well. What what are you looking forward to uh, when when season three goes goes live? What am I looking? <laughs> um, I was saying that uh, the Saturn and, and uh, Courtney Demir are like the Ross and Rachel of Superman. And will they, won't they ever finalize their friendship in a solid way? Um, but also, Zeb let me play, I don't know, spoiler alert here, but uh, Zeb let me play a very famous, very evil German dictator from our history. <laughs> and uh, that, that was branching out. I never thought I'd get to do that in my career. So. You fell I into so. it really easily. I fell into fell it really right easily. right into it. Which like is really bad. scary to think about. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So why don't, we, why don't we actually take a look at the trailer for season three. And uh, if we can hit that, we'll get a, we'll get a look Former at Former criminal mastermind Dr. Deviso saved the life of Titanium Rex. Ah! Midway, I'm a doctor. Is how Dr. DeVazzo and the Injustice Club help save our asses from a subtopian invasion. They are bona fide heroes. Say hello to your new roommates. Well, that's just the shits. I don't trust DeVazzo, and I never will. Sergeant Agony, I don't feel safe. I can't stand these villains living in my mansion. I thought you and DeVazzo had developed a nice my two dad sort of thing.
I hate anti-heroes. I mean, pick a side. I'd take a villain over a vigilante any day of the week. No, I hear that word. Wait a minute. Terrific. And, and what a cast. You know, you, you look down that list of names and uh, uh, at Crackle we say we have the best <laughs> cast on television. And uh, just what, a, uh, what an accomplishment to, to bring that kind of talent uh, together for, for this show. So um, uh, one of the questions I've always, I've always had is uh, you record the voices separately. You record the acting talent separately. So how do you how do you make those conversations, like the last one between Rex and Deviso, sound so natural as if they are playing off each other? What, how, what's the secret behind that? I think you have to, you know, let the actor know exactly what's happening, and then we get, and Brenkin can speak to this. We get the lines read a few different ways, uh. <laughs> so that so that we have options, and sometimes they fit together. But usually, we can make with three options of each. Uh, line we can make them fit together and work yeah it's you know anytime we bring in an actor we always say you know give us three different give it to us three different ways and then if it's not right we'll adjust uh how the read goes you know sometimes we'll have them project as if it's far away sometimes we'll have it you know do a little bit quieter um but it really is up to the director to to guide the path and kind of hear it in their head to try to get where they need it to be um and if you, have, if you have one of the characters in a conversation record their lines, and it takes it in, uh, oh, and then you, then you record the, the next character, but the second character takes it in a different direction with their delivery, do you go back and re-record the first one if, if there's gold there? Sometimes, yeah. If we, if we find gold, we'll get a pickup and have someone react to it. Absolutely. It's a, a really fascinating process. Um, uh, Breck and I'm going to come back to you. Um, okay. you. You have a few different voices on the show. Is there any, is there any character that you wish you had voiced, like any, anyone else that, uh, that has already <laughs> taken that, that you wish, boy, I wish I'd had a shot at that, but Zeb never gave it to me? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, the first two seasons. <laughs> first two seasons, Zeb never let me play on the show. Um, That's not true. It was second so season. Second season, on. I got yeah. to come. He gave like a dog a bone, and he let me do a few. But uh, the whole first season, I'm, I'm <laughs> you I'm were, nowhere you to be seen. You were, you were, <laughs> nowhere to be seen. I was totally available, but uh, were you not in anything? You were, you didn't do a no, <laughs> <laughs> not a one, man. Uh, no, I think you know. I, honestly, I let the minute Zeb said he had a character for me to play. I, Zeb and I know each other's voices pretty well from Robot Chicken, so I knew he'd kind of find the, the best characters to put me in. And so Courtney was definitely one of them. Oddly Hitler. <laughs> but, um, uh, no, I don't think there, I mean, again, like, no, because I, th I mean, I'd love to, you know, like originally you were saying Seth did Titanium Rex yeah. in the beginning. And so there's characters I love and I would love a shot of doing, but you're not going to get better than Keegan or Chris or Brian, so. We can get better than the event, but other than that. <laughs> your, your character, Courtney, has, I think, about a 20-year career as a valet. Did you have yeah. anything that you could draw on no. in your past <laughs> experience? To Courtney has a much better work ethic than I do. Uh, I've never had a real job, so Courtney's got one up on me already. But uh, no, I, lo I love Courtney's bravado. I really do. It's so I, Every time I get in the booth, I say, you know, can we hear... Um, you know, you call it a reference, where you basically say, hey, can you play me an old episode where I can hear what Courtney sounds like? And every time I see Nick or Zeb just kind of like, they, 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 they humor me by playing it, but all they want to do is go, it's your fucking voice. <laughs> it's the same voice you do for every show. <laughs> but happily, they... But we have to watch Brecken in there. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, mm, okay. All right, that's interesting. All right, give me a minute, guys. I'll get ready. Let me get into the character. He sounds a lot like me. <laughs> so... But yeah, I think I'm, I'm a fan of Courtney. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that always strikes us at Crackle is uh, that it's often the smaller lines or bits that, that really are so funny and really kind of make the show. Are, are, there, any, are there any that stand out for, for you guys? Any, even, even just a line that, that you thought was just performed perfectly and, and uh, even though it wasn't a big, a big line? <laughs> you want to talk about ocean stuff? <laughs> no. <I don't. laughs> 
Earlier, I accidentally uh, was praising a line in the show that I realized I had written and performed, <laughs> and uh, Brecken realized that, and I was skewered. Zeb was happily stroking himself <laughs> for a good 10 minutes in an interview. It was fantastic. The balls so on I better this guy. Sit the, I better sit this the one out. The balls on this guy. Uh, are there any lines that jump out that Those you wrote, Zeb, that you like? <laughs> Those are hard to remember. The lines that I say all the time? Yeah. <laughs> There was oh, there man. was the groaner when he called his balloon guy. You, you know that's yours again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again that's me. So I better just shut up. No, yeah, huh? it's good. <laughs> um, I'm trying to. Is think anyone of... else riding this train, by the way? Jesus, Did anyone don't. else grab one of these? They, they don't sell the bottles down at the mountain. They won't sell them. How, how do you get? How did you? How did? Because it's serious. Because it's not FDA approved yeah. yet. Because <laughs> it's liquid heroin. <laughs> I will. Yeah, Wait, oh, I is there a berry? I thought it's it's Red Dawn. It's Red Dawn. <laughs> yeah, that's not Barry. <laughs> We're learning it. That's dangerous. They can't call it Barry. It's Red what, Dawn. What is the third? It's this thing, which has no name. No sugar. But isn't it all sugar? No, it's no sugar. Wait, this one? No, 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 the, no, the third no. flavor the, the lemonade. is lemonade. Lemonade, yeah. <laughs> the white one. <laughs> they, says and they've been calling it, which sounds creepy. Yeah. Well, this is my second one. I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> I had a sip of one and started sweating, so I stopped right away. I, I know they sponsor this event, but they're also going to sponsor a lot of funerals. <laughs> Matt, this, this is this is na this is totally, nature's monster. <laughs> we've totally forgot your question. That's all right, Matt. Matt, how how often do you step into the booth and and record some voices, and and uh, how, how do you make that how do you make much. that choice? When when, when, when do they say hey we need Matt? Two answers to this voice. question. One. I'm not a voice actor in any way, shape, or form in any way. And on Robot Chicken, uh, Seth forces me to go in the booth. And I don't say no because it, it gives me Screen Actors Guild health insurance. I was about to say it gives me health insurance. Which is wonderful, but I'm terrible. Um, and then two, as soon as the show started, Zeb was like, there's no fucking way you're going to go to the booth. And so that says everything you need to know. Is I acknowledge I'm bad. Zeb knows I'm bad. And I don't do it. <laughs> So you are third senator uh, at, at the press conference. Exactly. I, I kind of just like to praise them or let them praise themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Which Zeb is quite good at. <laughs> That's terrific. Um, let's see. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we show a clip and then, and then we can have some audience uh, questions. So. Again, a, a perfect example of numerous voices in a conversation. It sounds like it's all recorded together and uh, they're all recorded separately. Just amazing. Fantastic, guys. Okay, let's have, uh, let's have a couple of questions out here.
Shout raise, him out. raise a hand. I don't know. Oh. Right here. Oh. Oh. Up. Oh. He's got a. Oh. We we have a mic over over here. We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. All right. This show being about superheroes and all. Um, how permanent is death on your show? Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Is this a Brad lover? I'm just wondering what kind of, of craziness can go on. I'm just going to look at Zeb when this question is answered. I think comic books have a long tradition of death being less than permanent, but Brad feels very dead to me. I don't know if that's what your question was about, but, 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 not but me. the level of craziness is, is uh, as large as your average comic book. I think this season, Courtney becomes a vampire and later on becomes not a vampire, so there's a lot of things that can happen. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, <clears throat> but Brad's death feels very permanent to me. Or not. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> See, Zeb? People like that character. People like Brad. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Hey guys, I love your show. Um, one of my favorite things is that you have characters that are really original, but they still have enough reference to their inspiration that the jokes land. You don't really get that with the villains as much except Groner. So where did some of your influence come for your villains? Yeah, that's, that's an question. interesting yeah. point. There's, yeah, the Groner is based on someone, but everyone else is sort of, yeah. Yeah, that's, I don't know. That's a really good question. Yeah, because Deviso is not really based on anyone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, Robo Dino. He when we were de when we were designing Titanium Rex on a lark, or I think Matt asked for it. The artist drew an actual T Rex with with titanium arms as Titanium Rex, and we just thought the design looked so cool that we had to use him. But I think that we put so much thought into the heroes because we knew that they would be the ones that, that needed to work every single episode. And then the villains we came up with on a more of a weekly basis, that that must be the reason. I think in season three, like episode two, we have Max Penalizer, who's obviously based on the Punisher. On the Punisher, but again, he's kind of a good guy. Yeah, and so I think that as the show goes on, we'll we'll do that more. But I don't know. Yeah, and it's right when you, when you see all those villains together, they're all. <laughs> very crazy. They don't follow any sort of rhyme or reason, and I think that's because they were invented week to week, and then we threw them all together at the end. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's okay if you don't like them. It's not. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, that was a good question. I didn't, I didn't even thought of that. You know, yeah. we, we saw an example up uh, in, in the, the clip scene of uh, Robo Dino, which is a voice that Chris Pine does, which is hilarious. And he does a, a few voices on the show, and I'm thinking that we got to have some more voices for Brecken. So what, yeah. what's, <laughs> what what, what's in store? How about we get him a, uh, a recurring villain yeah. or something? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> what do you have there? The Before he tears the, <laughs> tears the panel you apart. You break the microphone. Right. Um, he does this in the booth, too, yeah, which Zeb. is why. Yeah, Zeb. <laughs> why does Chris Pine get all the good roles? <laughs> What's Captain Kirk have that I don't? I'll take a, I'll take a listen to your reel. I'll see what, <laughs> Wait, see what you can come up with. Yeah, I'll see what I can I come up with. It. <laughs> it is amazing. What is it? It's uh, Cranston, Keegan, Chris, Jillian. Yvette, Nicole Brown. Yvette. Yeah. It's an insane cast. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. There's one, yeah. I can't say. There's one more coming later this season. Who's that? I forgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Plus, because right. yes. I'm getting stared at right now. I'm like, don't shut up. <laughs> Is there people? Are there people we're not allowed to say? Uh, certain guest stars coming up that we're not allowed to say. Yes, because we'll be announcing them. Oh, okay. Can wow. we tell? Big, can big we tell names. these 29 people? <laughs> <laughs> no, because can we're we give streaming. them an exclusive? Can we shut <laughs> off the camera for a second and give them an exclusive? <laughs> We can give it to the 29 people here and the three people streaming at home. <laughs> Are we allowed to do that? Uh, there's thousands, tens of thousands. Can we, give it, can we give, give it to the hundreds of thousands at home? All right, with See, that the, was a good uh, voice. two holiday specials that you've done already, do you guys do yeah, those? Yes, you right there. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Do you guys do those later, like afterward? Do you think them up later? And then what are your plans for your next holiday special? 
I think the Christmas one we came up with, we realized we had written about six episodes and we realized just how it was coming out that we could do a Christmas special. So we stopped everything and wrote that one. And we haven't announced a couple of those other oh, holiday specials. So. Right, uh, but, 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 but we, the, we, we are doing a summer special this season, <laughs> which I think has been announced, if not. I yeah. hope. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it, it has summer now. specials. Summer Exclusive. specials been announced. You just got the look. And we uh, look, look at Steve when you're saying it. So we uh, <laughs> we wrote uh, we wrote that afterwards. And if you're a fan of other summer specials, all I thought if you're a fan of the Brady Bunch, I think you'll like <laughs> you'll like this one. That's a, that's a huge subset of our viewing audience, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. All the, those the Brady uh, Bunch 12 fans. to 17 and 18. Terrific. Uh, yeah. year olds with the Brady Bunch. Out here, please. Hi, uh, I just wanted to know what the uh, backstory was on the choice to go with the uh, villain's hideout in season two being next to the Arby's. <laughs> Arby's had a pretty strong I think if you presence. thought really hard, <laughs> you could come up with the reason why we put a, the villain's lair next to an Arby's. <laughs> Arby's has it's got a little a, something to do with this. Arby's has been a great partner for us, and we we found some <laughs> some true? terrific yeah. places to uh, of, put them certain, into the story. We love Arby's. A certain Arby's character that Brecken plays. Oh, oh exactly. you did play DeAndre. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. But that That's was true. something that ended up we we all loved that because we thought it was just ended up being very funny that the villains were obsessed with Arby's and that. The groaner likes his Jamocha shakes, and they're all. There's that scene where they're late to their meeting because they've all gone to Arby's and didn't bring any for Lex. That was funny. <laughs> it's also when we write Robot. Robot Chicken is filled with the most unhealthy writers in the history of the world, and so every time lunch <laughs> rolls around, we decide where we're going to go for lunch, and people do different places and stuff. And I will say, probably five years ago, at some point. Somebody it might have been Sethi saying they were going to go to Arby's, and my first thought was, "Are there Arby's? <laughs> like, are there still Arby's?" And it is, and so it is a it is a um, it is a staple in the Robot Chicken writers' room um, of many of the writers who have since died, <laughs> but big fans of Arby's in the Robot Chicken writers' room. So, I'm, you know, thank you. It just, it just bled over into Superman. <laughs> They, they have the meats, I believe. So, um, <laughs> yep, they have the meats. Vin Ring, Ving Rames told us they have the meats. <laughs> Do we have any, uh, let's, let's go to somebody else. Raise a hand, grab the mic. Or just yell it, we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need these. <laughs> you guys can hear it. Anything you want in the whole universe. Oh, go for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, your voice is way less. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> If you think of the new girl, you might be able to figure it out. <laughs> is that Max? Yep. Oh, no, it's not Max. It's not Max Greenfield? No, it's not. It was, um... Is it Zoe Deschanel? Yes. <laughs> what am I blanking out of his name? All of a sudden, it's Nick? Adam Pally? Nick? Um, the guy who plays Nick on the show, and I'm blanking out his name, and I feel terrible for this right now. What's Jake that? Johnson? Jake Johnson. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, he was great. I was like, I can visualize <laughs> he was, him. He was so great, you didn't remember <laughs> his name. So other than doing Superman dreams, I every year, any plans to do like a feature-length kind of contractual? That's all up to uh, this guy who's standing there. No plans. I feel like you do a movie once you get canceled, right? Like, and so we'd have to get canceled first. <laughs> Steve's like, I got the announcement <laughs> for you. <laughs> I've got good news. Yeah. I've got good news. But then for you, you do it, and you got to do it live action. So we're gonna get all the voice cast to play themselves. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, I think it'd be fun. You know, like uh, in Japan, how they take a whole season of a show and then they condense it down to a, a movie that's like two and a half hours long. I think that'd be interesting to try to do with the vo with the voice cast as themselves. No, you t you just take you just you just oh, re you just re edit it. everything, then they release it in the theaters. The Godfather yeah. epic. Yeah. I think that's what this season three is going to be like. It's it's it feels a it feels a little more yeah yeah. But we've been pushing it a little more every season, and this season we pushed it even a little further. Yeah, it's uh, especially where it's going and ending is very much like that. So hopefully you guys like that. <laughs> Over here. Who is your um, favorite character that you've created? Oh boy. 
Uh, no pressure. I'm sure it's going to be a Zeb voiced character. <laughs> no, that's hard. I think I've, I've got a soft spot for Cooch, but she's played by my wife. <laughs> And she's based on our cat at home, our, ca our cat Tweaky. So I think she. <laughs> he's shaking his oh, head. He's just sharpening his knife. <laughs> so I think that's my favorite character. The favorite character I voice, let's get back to that, is the groaner because when I. <laughs> I can't talk about the groaner in front of him. Um, but when I hear the groaner's voice, it, it doesn't sound like me, so I, I think I've just seen some weird <laughs> so creature. So you've done a really good job. So I've done, I've, I've done <laughs> the job. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's uh, some great Courtney groaner conversations in season three because the groaner hates how Black Saturn is obsessed with him, but then kind of figures out maybe he loves it and then gets jealous of Courtney. And so there's a little bit of a sleeping, I don't know, what would you call it? Single white female thing going on mm -hmm. for a few episodes. Yeah. Um, yeah, who's your favorite character? That you've created. I was about to say, I don't, I, I don't, I don't write on the show, so I haven't created any characters. I'm happy anytime Zeb asks me to do a voice on it. I do <laughs> like Courtney a great deal. Um, and what's the Arby's Will name? you help? What's the Arby's? DeAndre. DeAndre. DeAndre, DeAndre, DeAndre is, is pretty funny. He's hilarious. hilarious. Playing the Arby's employee <laughs> is moonlighting is pretty funny. We have another question. Is there going to be a Super Mansion video game? Oh, knowing that it's Sony, there should be. There should be. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in answer to that and, and also the, the movie question, we, we are always looking for uh, additional ways to grow this world. And we, we just are so proud of our partnership with Stupid Buddies um, in, in, in bringing it to fans and if there's a, a, a way to make a feature, we'd love to make a feature. If there's a way to make a video game, we'd love to. We, we, uh, we haven't gotten into that so far just yet. Uh, again, we've been working a long time on season three and we're, we're really proud to uh, have that coming out on May 7th, but uh, any other stuff including merchandising and, and uh, just additional content uh, uh, from this world, we, we really want to bring. Anybody else? I want to know what panel you guys came in to watch. <laughs> What? Yeah, you guys, which panel did you come in? There's something after us, I guarantee it. What is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> who, who from DC is here? I appreciate that. What, what it, from DC? Like what? DC Universe so it's like what? Dan DiDio and Jim Lee and stuff? I think that's Bendis. Cool. Bendis? Uh, oh, Bendis? <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> hopefully, they don't re hopefully they don't recognize any of these characters. <laughs> <laughs> Start the start the eventual lawsuit. I was about to say, it'll be a the inevitable lawsuit. lawsuit. Nice lawsuit panel. <laughs> As we look to, uh, like like we're discussing additional content, um, do you? Uh, and I know you just got finished uh, finishing up uh, writing season three, but are there stories that you have in the future that you could tease and just say, boy, I'd, I'd love it if uh, the gang did this or or anything like that. Anything additional? I think. We had so much fun with them going to the future and seeing the future versions of themselves that they'd love to get back to, back to the future. And, <laughs> and I love old Groner. How dare, and, you? <laughs> dare you say that? <laughs> where, where else may I get a laugh at that? <laughs> I didn't, so it, it was a waste of time. <laughs> but I had to try. Uh, and, and there's also just storylines that we, we had so much fun in season two, like, you know, doing our version of a Galactus story or our version of Days of Future Past, and now we're doing our version of The Punisher, and there's more stories like that out there that I'd like to tell as a comic book fan. Who's your dream guest star? Dream guest star? Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Who would I have him play? Um, he could play Rex's one. dad, I guess. That's <laughs> oh, that's pretty good, see? Yeah. This is why you write the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> um, who's yours? I can't remember. I can't remember who's turned us down. <laughs> they were your dream? Yeah. Like just destroyed your dream in some capacity? Michael Keaton would be fun on the show. Yeah. Keaton would be We fun. have not asked him yet. 
I will say that. You should ask him. We should. Can we use your name? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You guys yeah. are in a movie. To, you guys are in a movie together. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? I think Seth played. I think Seth played Black Saturn's dad. Yeah. But we haven't seen him in so long. We could recast him. Yeah. <laughs> Seth won't care. <laughs> That, 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 that's, actually, care. that's actually a good question. Are there, are, there, uh, are there spots? I don't think Seth shows up, but are there, uh, do you bring him back at all? Or, or are know, there chances to, <clears throat> to uh, have Seth come in and voice uh, any characters in the future? Yeah, you know, we, we got rid of the spiritual advisor character this, this, for this season, oddly. But yeah, we, we'd bring him back potentially in a future season. Um, yeah, he needs to play hard to get a little bit. Yeah. It's the fact that he's at the studio all the time. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, yeah, he went off and shot a movie this summer, so that took, that took him away from us. <laughs> made us sad. Um, all right, other questions, anybody? Anybody from the DC panel want to <laughs> ask a question? <laughs> Have you written DC? No, I've never written a DC comic. Only Marvel. I find them distasteful. Is that right? Only Marvel? Yeah. I'm a Marvel guy. What is it? You're saying that All right. I'm a Marvel audience. guy. And come yeah. at me. <laughs> <laughs> what is the production process and schedule like from writing to an actual episode being completed and ready for airing? Ooh. I always say it's from the day Zeb starts to write to probably the first episode is done, it's probably about nine or ten months. Um, but it's, it's a long, arduous process. I mean, this season is... and. The difference between this and Robot Chicken, Robot Chicken is only a quarter hour. This is a half hour program. So you have to remember every animator is moving those little puppets one frame at a time. And it is, you just walk in there and they're doing maybe 10 seconds a day. And, you and I think we have 28 stages this season and we need a set of our characters for each stage that we have. So we have 28 puppet, 28 versions of each puppet. Yeah which I'm sure one day will get sell, sold on eBay <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> when we're all done. <clears throat> but it's really cool because it happens all in-house. We don't farm any of it out, so all our animators are there, the people building the sets and the puppets are there, so it's really fun to walk around and see all the artists at work. It's a pretty cool job. Can you, can you, when you say you have 28 <laughs> stages, can you describe the stages to, to our fans here, uh, sort of give them a better idea of what we're talking about? Yeah, the puppets are about this big, so you figure the stages are about as big as this table, and then there are just a massive web of lighting going on. So it's like an indoor stage you'd see on a three-camera sitcom, but everything's shrunken down, but you still need lighting and and sets and they're all yeah they're all like in a little like you pull back a curtain because they're all in these little boxes and it's just you go to a different world with each curtain you pull back so you can have the mansion on one thing and then you pull back the next one it'll be a jungle set or you pull back another one and it'll be a bathroom or whatever it might be and it, it's it's surreal because they're next door so this this room would probably fit like 20 stages Next time we'll bring some pictures or a visual aid of any kind, which we probably should. Will make yes, will make this <laughs> much more interesting. <laughs> no, 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 uh, back there. One back there. Has there been any storylines that you either thought were too close to the original, other properties or anything that got on the process, and maybe either Sony or you, you guys yourself said we can't do this; it's too close to that. I think every time we based a story on another story our characters take it in, in a different place pretty quickly. So I don't think we've ever gotten too close, but that's probably for the lawyers to eventually decide. <laughs> I'll be answering that question to a judge it's <laughs> someday. Remember, DC's in here next. Yeah. <laughs> but Zeb's a Marvel guy. <laughs> right here? Okay. How about a behind-the-scenes featurette, like showing like the sets being constructed and some of the we, process and everything like that? Is like an extra on the DVDs or something? We have that. We somewhere. actually, I believe, have that. If I'm not losing my mind, we don't have it with us, but we have a we have a featurette that uh, Brian Cranston hosted, and is really really neat to to see him walking behind the scenes and talking with uh, a bunch of the crew and the directors and sort of showing everyone. What, uh, how they make the show. It's fascinating. Uh, I, I'll, uh, I guess we'll be looking to see if that's something that we can offer online because I know it would be interesting to people. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's little things where we even started, we teach classes of stop motion at our studio and like it's, it's a very specific medium and you have to be very patient. Zeb even took the class himself to be an animator and realized it's hard. Like, yeah. you know, when I started Robot Chicken, the animators forced me to learn how it was to see how hard it was. Because I, I, I went half a day and wanted to blow my brains out because I can't stand, let alone for move things for, you know, five hours at a time. <laughs> what, what are you getting what, what, over what's there? the, when, when, you, uh, when you move frame to frame, are you talking about moving the, the puppet's hand a, a, a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch? Like, how? how what? Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's probably less limit. than an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Less than an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Depending on how fast the characters What is the be. average for an animator a day? Ten we seconds. try to get 10 seconds a day. And we're shooting uh, 24 <laughs> frames a second, so, and we shoot on two, so it's, it's 12 frames. moves. Yeah. Which is a lot. That's really fast. a lot. Like something like Coraline is probably doing like a second to two seconds a day. That's so crazy. Yeah. We should stop. <laughs> <laughs> it takes too long. Let's just do live action. Oh, over here. Over it looks like horror. So, how many hours of tape are you recording to put into each episode? So we don't. It's kind of nice. We're not. We don't have to use tape. We use actual still DSLR cameras, which take uh, because we're just doing frame by frame, and that takes a high resolution image. So we just stack those next to each other to get the movement, which is good because if you want to reframe it all, you have some resolution that you can do a, make a close-up out of a, a medium shot if you need to. Yep. But there's a good program called Dragon Frame that we use, and all you need is a, a camera and that Dragon Frame program, and you can fool around with it at home if you want to. And sometimes we get asked, uh, are there any blooper reels? And well, no, not really because they don't shoot anything that's not gonna be in the episode and they don't record anything that's, that doesn't, doesn't make it, uh, doesn't get animated. So it's all there in the, in the episode. Yeah, there's no extra footage. Really? Where can we go? No, cut it down to ask for like, there's, there's, a little, yeah, all right. there's a little extra footage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When does the next DVD come right here. out? Go ahead, shout oh. it out. Oh, unset. <laughs> Oh, it's such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it is Couldn't a good agree question. Because it's cool. It's, you're playing with toys. Like, you look at it and it's, it has depth to it. It's just, again, being able to take that figure and do whatever, you know, like, and, and it, there's something just tangible about it that makes it fun. Um, and there's not a lot of it out there. It looks different than a lot of things that are out in the marketplace. And I think that's what makes it pop. It's fun. Oh. Or, <laughs> and what was your question again? <laughs> season two uncensored. Uh, <laughs> hmm. We're definitely putting it out. I'm <laughs> not sure when that comes out. I think part of the thing is is that Crackle is available on your phone or <laughs> on your iPad, and it's it's free. <laughs> <laughs> it might be on iTunes uncensored already. I think I, I might have seen it. Is that it. true? You'll have to check, it yeah. might be. <laughs> but yeah, but like you can be watching it while we're talking about nonsense right now and it'd be great. <laughs> Just go watch it online. The, the weird part about the uncensored thing is when we blurt out the puppet penises, <laughs> I never, go, go I never intended for anyone to see those, ever. <laughs> so I, I thought that even the uncensored version would still be blurred. So when I was watching the uncensored version, I'm sorry you had to see that, is what, I, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> they are, yeah, they, they're very they're, good at it. Uh, we have this uh, woman, Nikki, who um, had to build those. Um, and she, as she put it, you know, had to make sure that there was a average size and then figure out who got the larger ones. And we're like, what would be an average this, size? Is man? this sexual harassment? <laughs> we're like, oh my God, like, I'm so sorry you have to build these things. And she's like, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> she really, yeah, it's, it's a conversation. The penis wrangler, she yeah. called herself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Not gonna hear that on the DC panel. <laughs> <laughs>
You might. You might. That could be a new character. <laughs> the Beware penis the wrangler. penis wrangler. <laughs> I've got your penis, Batman. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, we got it right there. Penis wrangler. <laughs> Any, any other questions? We, we've had some, uh, some people joining us. They've definitely had a penis wrangler in the DC world. If you go back deep, probably, there's probably yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And the who's who? Yeah, there's, 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 there's a deep cut yeah. from like 1970 that had to have some <laughs> penis wrangler type vibe. <laughs> All right, so maybe this is a good chance. Like I say, we've had some, uh, some additional people join us. So why don't we take another look at the trailer? Uh, we're very proud of it. Again, this is going to be uh, uh, launching on May 7th on Sony Crackle Network and in conjunction with uh, Sony Pictures Television and Stupid Buddy Studios. Here we go, a trailer for season three. Former criminal mastermind Dr. DeBizo saved the life of Titanium Rex. Ah! Make way! I'm a doctor. Seeing as how Dr. DeBizo and the Injustice Club helped save our asses from a subtopian invasion, they are bona fide heroes. Say hello to your new roommates. Well, that's just the shits. I don't trust Deviso, and I never will. Sergeant Agony, I don't feel safe. I can't stand these villains living in my mansion. I thought you and Deviso had developed a nice, my two dads sort of thing. I hate anti-heroes. I mean, pick a side. I'd take a villain over a vigilante any day of the week. I hear that word. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, that, 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 brings up, that brings up a question I've always had. Maybe, maybe you guys can describe the, the process for the mouths and how they, how they speak. And then also, I guess my question is, sometimes you see the mouths uh, are flat, and then sometimes they're actually around the face. What's the difference, and how do you how do you decide what's, what how it's going to be? Uh, I think the um, the animators have the ultimate choice there. I, I like them better when they're stuck down to the face. They're stickers, um, but sometimes the animators like them looking better when they're popping off a little bit. And I think they're mostly stickers, but they're digital. Sometimes, sometimes if we get behind schedule which yeah. is usually around day two of the shoot. <laughs> and so there, there's always a big chunk of it that are digital mouths. But some of the animators don't like giving up the control of, um, to the post, to post of how the mouths look. So they want to do the mouths themselves. That's great. <laughs> any any, like any questions right, right over I here? Like OK. <laughs> so this is a two-parter. Do you have? people that were animators that were inspirations to you? And the second part is, have you tried to get them to have guest spots on your show? That's a good question. Um, you know, Phil Tippett, like the Tippett Studios stuff always blew my mind away back in the day. Um, you know, it's one of those things where there are amazing talent out there, but I think the animators that I also grew up with um, are more 2D uh, animators, so it may not be the type of stuff that uh, can animate on a, a stop motion show. I'm trying to think, like Don Bluth, I love, I loved his stuff from, uh, you know, those video games back in the day. And um, what's that? Wasn't Don Bluth American Tail as well? Yeah, yeah. he had a yeah, but uh, yep, Pete's Dragon. Yeah, that's some oh, great oh, oh. stuff. I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know. But we've got some um, animators and crew that worked on Nightmare Before Christmas and a lot of the classic movies. So it's such a small, the stop motion really world is. is so small that you find yourself working with a lot of your heroes just by the nature of working in that business. Have you guys gotten a chance to walk the floor here? Uh, no. Uh, no, you, you did this I morning, did. right? I did. I walked Matt? the floor a little bit and yeah. I bought way too much stuff and it was great. What was the best thing you bought? The best thing I bought? I'm embarrassed to say. Uh, it's a little wind-up Mario Kart from Mario Kart 8 that you can pull back and it'll zip. And I, was, I, I don't know why I was getting it. I bought uh, probably eight of them for every character, <laughs> which I don't know what I'm going to do with now, but I thought it was really cool. 
I was about to ask you what was the most embarrassing thing you bought, but I think you answered that <laughs> at the same time. I got a plush Shy Guy. <laughs> did, Zeb, did you walk the floor yet? No, I might go look at some Marvel comics later. <laughs> um, no DC. Um, Are you sure? Because I hear DC is quite popular. Really? Yeah. Not, not in my house. No, they do Batman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we did a Robot Chicken DC, <laughs> but three of them, I think, right? Or two. No, I love DC comics. I'm being hilarious. <laughs> Uh, Brecken, have you, uh, <laughs> are you walking the floor? I have not walked the floor yet, but I am looking forward to Because you'll get mobbed. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm looking forward to walking the floor and buying toys and things like that. Brecken, what else are you, what else are you working on these days? Where can, uh, people, where can people see you? Where can people see me? I'm on uh, Super Mansion. I play Courtney. There you go. Uh, what am I doing? That's about it. Playing with Kiefer? Oh, I've been doing the Kiefer Sutherland show. I've been doing Designated Survivor. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Kiefer. And, uh, <laughs> I'm Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, I've been doing Designated Survivor for a bit, so I'll keep doing Aren't that. Aren't you playing his little, brother? Playing his brother. Because you guys look We look exactly almost the same. identical. And uh, yeah, things like that. I can't see what that sign says, but it's. Five minutes. Oh, is that what it says? Okay. Yeah, no pressure. Okay. This story about Designated Survivor will be exactly five minutes. <laughs> so I'm doing Designated. I'm kidding. So yeah, I've been working on that, and then uh, Sethi and I went and did a movie. Seth directed his first movie. He won't talk about it right now, but Seth directed a movie, he wrote a movie, uh, the same one. He wrote and directed a movie uh, that we shot in Thailand this summer with me, Seth, Brenda, Brenda Song, Macaulay Culkin, who was in Home Alone, and uh, what's his name? Uh, I'm blanking. Randy. Randy, Randy Orton uh, from the uh, World Wrestling Entertainment. Is it Federation? <laughs> what are we doing now? We're WWE? Um, so yeah, I was doing that. Fantastic. That. That'll come out at some point. Um, uh, yes. You know what? On behalf of Sony Crackle and Sony Pictures Studios, Sony Pictures Television, I'd just like to say thank you all for coming out. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's, we're so, again, so proud to bring you this awesome show, and we hope you enjoy season three. You can stream it free on Crackle uh, May 7th. Uh, please tune in and, and watch it and tell your friends. And uh, let's give a big hand for the guys up here. Thank you, guys, for coming. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone.